All right, so my name's Jonathan, um, and I am a research scientist here at the LMB, and I work in the lab of Lalita Ramakrishnan. Um, and we study tuberculosis, or for short, TB. Um, and I'll be telling you about this deadly disease, um, and it's a bit of a fishy tale, as we'll find out later. So first of all, who gets TB? Well, anyone can get TB across the age range. But what we see is that it's actually very common in young people, so children and young adults. And TB is this deadly disease that is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. And this bacteria, if you get infected with it, it can make you really sick. And if you don't get treatment or if the, uh, if the disease gets worse, it can lead to death. What does it look like when you get TB? Well, some of you mentioned these things on the, uh, the word cloud at the start. So people that have TB often cough a lot, sometimes coughing up blood. They lose weight and they're tired and a bunch of these other symptoms. And so how do you actually get TB? Well, TB is spread by people that are infected with TB coughing. And when you cough, you release these droplets of water into the air. And if an infected person coughs, some of those droplets of water will have a TB bacteria in it. And if you're standing next to someone who's coughing and is infected with TB, and you breathe in some of those droplets, then the bacteria can make their way into your lungs, where they start to cause the disease. And so you breathe in a bacteria in those droplets, and it goes down into the bottom of your lung. And there, a, a, a cell from your immune system called a macrophage, which just means big eater, but we're going to call him Mac. Mac will come along, and he will eat the TB. Now, most of the times, Mac will kill TB, and that's all good. But sometimes, Mac will eat TB, and he won't be able to kill the bacteria. And then the bacteria will be able to grow and make more bacteria. And what they can actually do is they can kill Mac. And then some of Mac's friends, also called Mac, they'll come along and they'll eat these bacteria. And that will continue, and that battle between the bacteria and Mac will go on and on. Sometimes the bacteria will win, sometimes Mac will win. And as this goes on, Mac forms this kind of circle around the bacteria. And that is what we call the granuloma, which is this kind of telltale sign of tuberculosis. And as that granuloma develops, the people are trying to protect the rest of the body from the bacteria getting out. But sometimes those cells will die and the bacteria will be able to grow outside of the cells. And it's when that happens and someone who's infected like that coughs, those bacteria will be able to go out and infect someone else. And so in the past, TB was a really, really bad disease. It is the disease that has killed the most people throughout history. And a long time ago, there was as many as 25% of people had TB disease in places like London. About a, a thousand years ago, um, four million people died from TB in England and Wales. That's more than all the people currently living in Wales. And TB was called this thing called consumption, as a couple of you said at the word cloud earlier. And people lost weight, they lost the color in their face, um, and it looked like the bacteria was eating them from the inside. And so what did people do to try and get rid of TB? Well, one of the things they did was send them to a sanatorium. Again, I saw that word at the start. And a sanatorium was somewhere out of the city where there was fresh air. And the idea was that you could go there and get treatment and try and recover. One of the main things that people did to try and stop the spread of TB was very similar to what we saw at the start of the COVID pandemic. So you were asked to cover your coughs and sneezes to stop the spread of the bacteria. And then you're also told to get tested, get an x-ray of your lungs so that you could see if you had TB in your lungs. And then about 80 years ago, they developed a or 100 years ago, they developed a vaccine called BCG. And a lot of the older people in the audience will probably got that as a kid. But the thing about BCG 
is that it is only good against protecting certain types of TB. So if you remember back to that first slide, I said anybody could get TB, but BCG really only protects these first two age groups. So we have a vaccine, but it's not very good. We also have drugs, and the drugs started being uh, used about 70 years ago, and we have a lot of drugs that work, and they're really good, but they're quite old, and they take a really long time. So it takes six months of drugs to treat TB. So it can be difficult to keep taking drugs for that long. Well, what about TB now? So I've got a little quiz. If you'd like to join the quiz, what do you think? So I'll give you a minute to join. All right, let's give it a go. It, I think you should still be able to join once, once the quiz starts. So how many people around the world do you think get TB every year? Oh, sorry, one second. <laughs> there we go. Right, there should be uh, answers on your screen, and you can click the answer that you think is correct. So those of you that said 10.6 million are correct. There's a lot of people still get TB now. And we don't see much of TB. It is all over the world, but we don't see a huge amount um, in England. And where it is mostly a problem is regions like uh, South America, sorry, South Africa, and Southeast Asia. So about 10.6 million people get TB every year. How many people do you think die from TB every year? So is it 0 0.6 million? Is it 1.1 million? Is it 1.6 million? Or is it 2.1 million? So actually, it's 1.6 million. TB kills the most people around the world of any other single bacteria or virus. So it is really still a big problem today. And what we uh, in our lab are interested in is this kind of process of how does disease start and what does the body need to be able to protect itself against TB? And we think that by studying those two things, that we'll be able to better treat people that have TB. And so I said, it's a bit of a fishy tail. So in our lab, we work on zebrafish, and you can see them swimming around in the tank now uh, with their stripy, uh, the stripes along the side. But fish and people are different, right? So fish live in the water and swim, and we live on the land and we walk. Fish, the fish that we work on are about this size and people can be, you know, all sorts of sizes. Fish are cold-blooded, we're warm-blooded. And one big thing, fish don't have lungs. I just spent the first half of the talk telling you that we get TB by breathing it into our lungs. But that's how we get TB. But TB isn't just a disease of the lungs. It can spread to other parts of the body. So you can get it in your brain, you can get it in your eyes, you can get it in your spine, you can get it in your bones. And so we don't look at the part of getting the disease, but actually how the disease starts. And so this here is that granuloma structure, this, the circle of cells and bacteria. And this is from a human. And so you can see this uh, small arrow points to this circle of the granuloma, and then this big black arrow points to a region in the middle where the bacteria are growing outside cells. And so in mice, you can see a big circle of infection. It doesn't have the same kind of structure as the human one, and, but you don't see that middle bit where the bacteria are growing outside. And then if we look at TB in the fish, this is a bit blurry because the fish are a bit smaller, but this big circle is the granuloma, that circle of cells, and this region in the middle is that region where the bacteria are growing outside. 
So, I want to know what you think. Which looks more like human TV? Mouse TV or fish TV? You can vote on your phones. Yeah, I think I'd agree with most of you. I would say that fish TV looks more like human TV. For most people, you can come and talk to me after. I have some interesting things to tell you. <laughs> and so, as I said, we don't look at this stage of transmission, how the bacteria go from one person to the next. But what we do look is at is this early stage. So when Mac eats the bacteria, and then how that granuloma, that circle of cells, forms. And what's really cool about the fish is that this is a fish that's only a couple of days old. And in the first few weeks, the fish are see-through. So you can see right through the fish. The other really cool thing about them is that they are very small. Now, here's a pound coin. You know what a pound coin looks like. It's pretty small, right? Well, the fish is about the size of the flat bit on the gold, or the queen's ear and her earring or the distance between her nose and her chin. So the fish are really, really small, and they're see-through. So the thing that we can do is we can look at them under a microscope while they're still alive and watch infection happen in real time, which is really, really cool and tells us a lot about this disease. And what we can do is we can make the cells in the fish different colors. So in this picture, Mac is red. And then we can make the bacteria different colors. So we can make them red or green or blue or a couple others. And then what we can do is we can fill a needle here with some bacteria. And there's just a red dye so that you can see it. We can take the fish, push it onto the needle with the hockey stick, and then inject. And then you can see the bacteria go up into the bloodstream. And so a couple of days later, you can see the bacteria growing in the fish under the microscope. So these are the bacteria in green, and you can see the tail of the fish in gray. And with human TB, all you can do to look at Mac eating the bacteria is take a picture. But in the fish, what we can do is we can take a movie, and we can watch the bacteria actually eat the, sorry, Mac actually eat the bacteria. So in this video, the bacteria are in pink, and Mac is in green. Um, and you can see here, there's a bacteria inside a macrophage, or a Mac. Um, and then if you watch this guy, he's going to eat this clump here, I think, in a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. If you watch, here's some again. There. Did you see that Mac eat some of those bacteria? So we can watch this happen in real time. And so that's Mac eating the bacteria. What about the start of forming of that circle, the granuloma? Well, we can also look at that. So in this video, the bacteria are in blue and Mac is in red. And you can see this little cluster of Mac infected with bacteria starting to form. And we can watch that over time. And so what we can do with the fish is we can ask who needs what? What does Mac need to be able to kill TB? And what does TB need to protect himself against Mac? And so Mac has lots of things to try and kill TB. And TB has lots of things to try and protect himself. And one of these things that Mac uses to kill TB is this, uh, this protein called TNF. And so different people make different amounts of this protein. So some people make a low amount, so there's only one TNF arrow. Some people make an average amount, so there's three TNF arrows. And then some people make a high amount, so there's five TNF arrows. And what we found when we looked at the fish is that if you make a, an average amount, the bacteria are able to grow, but Mac can control it pretty well. But if you make a low amount of TNF, or you make a high enough amount, a high amount of TNF, the bacteria are able to kill Mac and grow better. So this is what we saw in the fish. What does it look like in people? And so in people, if you have an, an average amount of TNF, this is kind of your survival with TB in the brain. If you make a low amount of TNF, you do worse. 
And if you make a high amount, you do even worse. So then we went back to the fish, and what we found was we found a drug that if you make an, a high amount of TNF, this is just bacteria in the fish, so an average amount of TNF, the bacteria able to grow, a high amount of TNF, the bacteria can grow better, and then if you treat the people that make high TNF with this drug, they go down a bit. But with the low group, the people that don't make enough TNF, the low, the bacteria go up, and then if you give them the drug, it goes up again. So the drug is bad for low TNF, but the drug is good for high TNF. That's in fish. What do you think about humans? So I've got another little quiz for you. All right, so drug for, is good for high TNF in the fish and bad for low TNF in the fish. Who do you think the drug would be good for in humans? Low TNF, high TNF, or both? Yeah, you're right. And when we look at the people, that's what we see. So if you don't give them the drug, this is what I showed you before. And now if you give them the drug, the people that make high TNF go from here to here, and the people that make low TNF go from here to here. So high does better, low does worse, just like we saw in the fish. So that's just one example of what we found that helps Mac kill the bacteria. But then, as I said, TB has a lot of things to try and protect himself against MAC. And that's what I work on. I work on a protein that is in the cell envelope. Now this is really complex and confusing, but all you need to do to know is that this cell envelope is kind of like the bacteria's armor. It helps it protect itself. And my protein is called ER. And if you look at the, bac uh, the bacteria's armor, that's the dotted white lines, you can see that my protein is in this armor. So each of these black dots is my protein, and it's in the armor of the bacteria. Now, the armor makes the bacteria look different. So one of these has normal armor, and one of these is missing my protein R. If you go onto your phone, you should be able to pick which picture you think has the, doesn't have my protein R. Right, so actually, this armor doesn't have ER. The normal bacteria have this kind of rough and bumpy uh, shape when they grow on plates. And the bacteria that don't have ER in the armor have this kind of smooth shape when they grow on plates. Right, so that's what it looks like when it grows on plates. Then what we did was we took a very small needle and we ran it along the armor and we checked to see what it looks like. So, again, if you want to pick, which one do you think doesn't have ERP in the armor? You're right. Yeah, so the one that is smoother and flatter doesn't have ERP in the armor. So, TB's armor is weak without ERP. So... I need a volunteer for this. Manu, if you come and help me. So, Manu is going to be the normal bacteria with a strong armor with ERP in the armor. And I'm going to be the bacteria with the weak armor that doesn't have ERP. So, if you have a red ball or a pink ball, these are going to represent our drugs. So, some of the drugs that we use against TB. And after three, I want you to throw it at either the bacteria with the strong armor or the weak armor, and we're going to see what happens. So three, two, one, go. <laughs> so the bacteria with the weak armor are killed by the drugs. 
more than the back two. We can stronger. Maddie, you're not done yet. Come back. If you've got any other colored ball, these are different things that Mac makes to kill the bacteria. So, I want you to throw the balls after I count to three at the bacteria with the strong armor and the bacteria with the weak armor and see what happens to each. So, three, two, one, go. <laughs> So in both instances, both times, either the drug or the thing that Mac throws at the bacteria, if the armor isn't strong, it's able to kill the bacteria better. And that's what we see in the fish. So here's a fish that is infected with normal bacteria. You can see the white or the bacteria. And here's that bacteria that doesn't have Irk in its armor. And there aren't as many bacteria growing. And so if we could somehow target this protein stop it doing its job, then we would have a really useful tool that would make it be killed by both the drugs that we use to treat TB and also how Mac uses uh, kills TB. And so Mac has lots of things that it uses to kill TB, but TB has a lot of things that it uses to protect itself. And our work in the fish is teaching us lots about both of those things. And that information, we hope, will be able to contribute to what is this global uh, plan to try and end TB. So with that, I'll end, um, and I'd like to thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, we're just going to do one or two minutes of questions, and then I'll be outside if you want to come and talk to me a bit more. And if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, come and visit our stall. It's at 1M at the far end of the building on the ground floor. So thank you. Uh, any questions? <laughs>